Chapter 2, Section 4, Computer Access for Disabled Users, by Matt Glover. Introduction. Computer systems which can be used by users with disabilities are said to be accessible. There are many different ways that computers and technology can adapt to suit the needs of vision-impaired users and users with mobility problems. Throughout this presentation, I will talk about the different uses of technology that we can use to fix their problems. One of the options is screen magnification. Screen magnification is useful as it zooms in on the screen so that all of the content appears in a much bigger and readable size. The downside is that the user cannot see the whole page and must go around to see every part of the screen, which can be very difficult because the magnification makes the screen snap whenever the user moves the cursor. This happens because it's zoomed in on such a small portion that when they try to scroll and see another part of the page, the screen just completely moves. So it may be really difficult to navigate the pages. And as you can see in the picture, it shows on the bottom right screen magnification, which makes everything much easier and readable to see, while the left side shows the overall web page, which may be very hard for people that can't see very well. There's also the option of having a large pointer. The use of a large pointer allows the user to easily see the cursor, which makes for a much easier experience of dragging, clicking, and scrolling. There's no real downsides to this besides if a user that isn't experiencing um, vision impairment wants to use the computer because the, the large cursor may make it hard to click on things if they're on a website where the content's very small and they might click on the wrong thing. But otherwise, it's very useful. And as you can see in the picture, it's very easy to change the cursor size, so it's not a big deal to change it back. You just go to this, in this case, System Preferences, and you go to Universal Access, and then you just change the cursor size by just dragging it from small to large or large to small. Another option is to use high contrast on the monitor. Contrast is the measurement of the difference in light intensity between the brightest white and the darkest black. Contrast ratio is used to describe computer monitors where 400 to 1 represent a better color representation than a lower contrast ratio such as 150 to 1. The 400 to 1 represent that the better the information will appear against a darker background, which makes things really easier to read when there's stuff in the background that may alter um, the easiness of reading the content. And as you can see in the picture below, this is a very, very high contrast ratio because it uses opposite colors, which makes it very easy to read everything on the screen. This would be used for somebody that cannot see the difference between the background content and the normal content because it makes it very easy to differentiate between the two. Speech control software is another method and consists of the user utilizing a microphone which enables them to speak commands that the computer will execute. Text-to-speech software is another alternative that can be used to read out loud the contents of the screen. An example that uses both speech recognition software and text-to-speech software is Siri for the iPhone, and I'll describe how it works below. Step 1. It uses ASR or automatic speech recognition to transcribe human speech into text. And in this case, it would be short utterances of commands, questions, or dictations. Step 2. It uses natural language processing, so part of speech tagging, now phrase chunking, and dependency to, tr to translate transcribed text into parsed text. Step 3. Uses question and intent analysis to analyze post text user commands and actions, such as if somebody says schedule meeting or set my alarm. Step 4. It uses data mashup technologies to interface with third party web services such as OpenTable and Wolfram Alpha to perform actions, search operations, and question answering. If Siri has identified a question that I cannot directly answer, it will forward it to a more general question answering service such as Wolfram Alpha. Step 5. Transforms output of third-party web services back into natural language text, such as today's weather report into the weather will be sunny. Step 6. It uses TTS, text-to-speech technologies, to transform the natural language text from Step 5 above into synthesized speech. Computer Accessories for Vision Impaired Users The Braille keyboard is a specialist input device that allows the user to type and enter text or instructions for the computer in Braille. And Braille is made up of raised dots in different patterns and arrangements that can be read by touch. This 104 key keyboard assists the visually impaired keyboard operator by providing the raised braille equivalents for the legends of all 101 keys. The great thing about this type of keyboard is that it has a clear backing for the, bra for the braille keyboard which allows normal users to use the same keyboard as well which means that they don't have to switch out keyboards every time that a normal user and a visually impaired user wants to utilize a keyboard for the computer. The braille legends are embossed to meet Americans with Disability Act ADA standards. And the only thing that they need to worry about about this Braille keyboard is compatibility with the computer, 
which they can check with the compatibility requirements. Another type of accessory is a braille embosser. It's an impact printer that renders text as braille. It makes braille production much more efficient and cost effective as it utilizes special translation software to emboss a printed document. There are many disadvantages, unfortunately, which include price, as they can cost anywhere from $2,000 to $80,000 depending on the user's needs. Compatibility is another issue because it may be incompatible with the user's computer platform. Abilities is another one, as they, um, their speed may be very slow in terms of their CPS or characters per second. Some of them might be adjustable, the height, which can also factor into the portability of the unit. It may be portable or may not. Another one is noisiness of the unit, because some of them even require a soundproof case, which shows how loud they might, they might be. And another one is the ability to print single-sided or double-sided, and the ability to print in both ink and braille or not. This could be a big issue in, in terms of households that include both a blind and, um, and normal users, so this is a big issue, and it comes into a play um, in the price and everything else. Now, some easy options for users with mobility problems include um, the trackball versus the mouse. The trackball requires much less arm dexterity, so it's definitely less arm movements, which is really good for people with mobility problems. And another solution is sticky keys, which allows you to type keyboard shortcuts one key at a time, rather than having to hold down all the keys at once, which really helps a lot because it's less, um, less movement and less having to hold stuff down, which really helps. And another good thing about this is that it's very easy to enable and disable. You just go into the system settings and then the universal settings, and then there you can enable it or disable it, so it's very easy. Some other solutions for users with mobility problems includes head control systems, which use a webcam and special software to track the movement of the user's head and convert it into pointer movement. Another type is input switches, which are pads that can be pressed with the user's hands, feet, or even head to input data. They are very large and very padded to help with their movements. Another solution is eye tracking software, which follows the movements of a user's eyes around the screen with the cursor following their gaze. An example of this is Project Sensei, which involves the eye tracking software in mobile phones where a smartphone's front facing camera tracks the user's eye movements. This allows the user to send messages, play games, and more without having to touch the handset at all. And as you can see to the left, this is a diagram of how the eye tracking software works and this is a little eye tracking module that they use. Alternatives for users with severe mobility problems includes a head wand, which is a type of input device that is worn and used to touch keys or switches, and a sip and puff input device, which allows the user to control the computer by blowing and sucking on a plastic tube. The change of air pressure is interpreted by the computer as a command, and different commands are can be executed by blowing or sucking harder or soft, softer. And on the left is an exam is a picture of the sip and puff unit, and then on the right is an, is a picture of the head wand. And here are the sources and credits. Creator of introduction and closing videos and PowerPoint presentation is me and Matt Glover. And then under that are the uh, links that I use for the information presented in this PowerPoint.